Okay, so it's day three of the readathon, which is day two for me because I only started yesterday. Um, and I'm still reading Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. Um, it's still pretty good. I haven't read much further than I did before. The only thing is that the words that it uses for time are different to obviously what I'm used to. It's a fantasy novel, but it, it keeps saying tides, which I think is years, but um, that seems kind of odd to me. Um, it's set in this world where the sun doesn't set. It doesn't exactly rise either. They're like in the part where it's always dusk, hence the title. Um, so maybe if the sun never sets properly and the moon never comes up, there is only one tide a year. I don't know enough about the ocean to know whether that's the answer or not. Um, there's also spans, and I don't know if that's a month or a week. It could be either. I'll get back to you. Um, and then the, d the words that it uses for day parts are the same as like Catholic mass. So there's um, matins in the early morning, that's dawn. Um, prime, which is the morning. Um, Compline, which is evening. And nocturne, which is um, nighttime, like midnight, I guess. I think. I, I'm going to have to Google to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that those are what those um, parts mean. So everything's just very weird. And I, um, I don't speak French, which is part of the inspiration for this novel, is the French language and I suppose French culture. And I'm not Catholic. So a lot of the words for things, I feel like if I spoke French or was Catholic, I'd immediately know what they were meant to be, but I'm neither of those things, so I don't. So, um, yeah, it's an experience, but it's really enjoyable so far, and um, hopefully I can keep enjoying it. It's day four of the readathon, and I'm filming this on my phone. They finally reached the capital city of the place. Um, which is called Amber City, and in the centre of Amber City is a big castle, and it's called Kerdor. And every time I read the words Kerdor, um, my brain goes, it says Kerdekur. And uh, no, um, Ned the Pie Maker does not live there, actually. It's a separate word entirely, but no. Pushing daisies is still taking over my brain. So it's day five of the readathon. Um, I'm still reading Amber and Dusk. Um, I'm going to aim to get to the halfway point, which is page 180, I think. Anyway, the chapter ends at 182, so that will be where I'm reading to. It's still really good. Um, the story is really kicked off at this point, and I really, really like it. Um, oh, wow. Hand tremor. Um, I figured out the the times of the day. So I mentioned earlier in the vlog that there were four names um, for parts of the day and that they were Matins, Prime, Compline and Nocturne. Um, that's how they tell time. Obviously they don't have a sun and a moon so their days don't work like ours do. So um, the day is split into four parts of six hours each. So the first one from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. is nocturne. 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. is matins. 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. is prime. And then 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. is compline. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it works anyway, from what I can glean. So it's day seven of the readathon. Um, I suppose that means it's the end of the first week. It's been seven days. Actually, that will be tomorrow because I am counting the first day of the readathon as like one day. So. Tomorrow, the eighth day, will be the end of the first week. Um, I did manage to get halfway into Ember and Dusk. Hang on, put my tea down. Um, I am currently on page 182, and that is the beginning of chapter 28. So, still reading this. Um, it's still really good so far. I didn't end up reading anything yesterday. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to read tonight. I'm kind of hoping for another. 80 pages and then that will leave me I think with only a hundred to go um, and then I should be able to smash that out over the weekend. I don't have anything more to say about the plot or anything of Amber and Dusk apart from the fact that I'm still enjoying it and I don't know about anyone else but uh, the character Dowser in my head just looks like Samuel L. Jackson. He's bald and he wears little spectacles and he's very kind of imposing. He has 
brown skin, dark brown, I think. I can't remember the word that was used to describe it, but it was, I think it was dark brown. And he has no hair and he wears these spectacles. And I was just reading that description and it sounded exactly like a cross between Nick Fury, Mace Windu and Augustus Gibbons. And that's what's in my head forever now. But, you know, it fits, and if they ever do make a movie, I really hope they can get Samuel L. Jackson to play Dowser, because that would be really cool. So, I'm going to go, and I'm going to put my pyjamas on, and lay down and read, and finish my cup of tea, and go to sleep. And I will see you tomorrow for the last day of this vlog. Okay, so it's Saturday, day 8 of the readathon, which means there is exactly one week to go. I'm obviously still reading Amber and Dusk, as um, I only have 100 pages left um, or so to go, so I'm going to smash that out today. Um, it's still really good. Uh, everything is kind of coming to a head, and I'm really excited to see where everything goes. And something else that I'm really liking is that it was just casually dropped into the narrative that same-gender marriage is legal, which is fantastic, and not just legal, but totally normalized which is honestly so fantastic and I wasn't expecting it and it actually made me just a little bit emotional because it's not often that you see that in a fantasy novel unfortunately they are all very heteronormative but this one is not um having said that unfortunately it is cis normative um there's no trans people so far there's no mention of them anywhere um and when Sylvie was asking Dowser if he was married she said do you have a wife or a husband and didn't say spouse and there's only ever been kind of those two options available to people but I would like it if it was acknowledged but um at least some kind of queer people do exist in this world that was really great English my arm is getting so tired. I will check back in tonight, hopefully when I finished, and we'll see where we are there. Good morning. Um, welcome to my bathroom. I lied to you, it is not Saturday night, obviously. It's Sunday morning. I went to sleep after finish an finishing Amber and Dusk, so um, this is my final update for that book. And the final part for this vlog, it's the weekend, so we're going to do a face mask while we're here. Um, bear with me a second. Oh, that works quite well okay so the face mask we are using today is bunny moon which is a jelly mask by whoops by lush so um my initial rating of the book last night was three stars i actually think i'm going to bump that up to four stars uh it was good i did enjoy it um it had all of the regular you know hallmarks or conventions of a YA fantasy novel that protagonist was special and she went to a place that would um tell her how she was special and help her break out of her disadvantaged upbringing and then there was an antagonist that she had to defeat and so that was a whole thing and she made friends and maybe some enemies and maybe some enemies who turned out to secretly be friends along the way it was fine it was good i enjoyed it i enjoyed the world and i enjoyed all of the characters but the reason that I only gave it three stars to begin with is because I am a little bit conflicted about it. Um, so in this world, as I've mentioned, um, same gender marriage is not only completely normal, but it is commonplace and absolutely not of consequence. It's not even in any way unusual or a big deal or anything. It is just, a regular state of being. So this means that in this world there are queer people who are, forgive me, I'm going to say queer but it relates in this case specifically to non-heterosexual allosexual attraction. Um, yeah, the, the existence of this kind of marriage and the fact that it is so normal in this society implies that the queer people in this world just live their lives and the world is not at all hostile to queer people, like specifically. Um, so that was really nice and that has made me conflicted about the thing that happened in the book that I'm mad about. Okay, so the thing is that the only two canonically queer named characters both essentially died. Future Lucy here. It's not actually clear whether these characters actually die or whether they just disappear and people assume they're dead because they never see them again. In the case of one of them, the protagonist finds him and he's not dead 
yet, but he's very close to it. But when she goes to get the guards to help and comes back, the body is gone. So we don't have an actual specific confirmation about whether or not he and everyone else who's disappeared is actually dead, or if they've just been taken somewhere. And either this confirmation is going to come in the next book, or we're going to forget about this entirely now that the antagonist has been defeated. And the, the first one just kind of seemed like another example of a thing that happens in the volatile um, world of this one particular royal court. But the second one happens specifically to further the non-queer protagonist's emotional development. Um, so on the one hand, you have this world that is not hostile at all to queer people, but on the other hand, you have a textbook case of bury your gaze. This is a duology, so there's going to be another one, so there's always a chance that there's going to be other queer characters with names with a big part of the plot that aren't going to die. And I do feel a little bit betrayed because I was so blindsided because the world seemed so welcoming to queer people. Like, usually they exist and they may not be persecuted for any reason, but in fan like, like marriage is rarely a thing for queer people in fantasy novels, unless it's specifically a queer fantasy novel. So I felt, you know, lured into a false sense of security by the fact that this world wasn't openly hostile, and then all of a sudden, they both happened to die. I'm probably not being very articulate about this, but that's probably helping you to understand how, you know, mixed up I feel about this, because it happened, and it was bad, but this world isn't hostile to queer people necessarily. It could have been an openly homophobic society and these two characters dared to snatch a tiny piece of happiness with each other and then died. And I mean, they did dare to snatch a tiny piece of happiness with each other, but what made it hostile wasn't that they were queer, it was that it was a hostile environment to begin with, regardless of whether you're queer or not. If the characters weren't queer and they died, then I would have given this book four stars really easily because they would have just been two more characters that died. They just unfortunately happened to also be gay and they unfortunately happened to be the only gay characters that were actually named in the narrative. And I say with names because at one point the protagonist walks down a hallway and there are two girls kissing and they don't have names and we don't hear about them again, but that was a thing. Yeah. Conflicted feelings. I just wish that authors would be a little more mindful of how they treat their gay characters and to make a concerted effort for them to not be the ones that die or have at least one that doesn't die. And also the other thing is that it happens so fucking often that I'm also just used to it. Maybe I'm really mad, maybe it will be better in the second book. Okay, the timer went off and I had to take the mask off. One last thing, I got tired of trying to figure out whether a span was a week or a month, so I tweeted Lyra Celine, and she says that a span is more or less equivalent to a month. I'm going to take a break from reading for the rest of the day because I am a little bit burnt out after that. Um, so I'm gonna probably listen to Critical Role while I do a few housework things and then Maybe I will read some Dumplin' or maybe I will read a series of unfortunate events in which many people will die but none of them will be queer. So this is the end of the first week and that means it's time for a new vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. I hope it's not too long for you. If you got all the way to the end, thank you for sitting through it all. Um, feel free to leave me a comment about anything and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.